Welcome to Culture Vulture, your weekly entertainment guide from an alternative viewpoint. Selections and writing is by Pat Harrington and music is from Tim Bragg. Highlights this week include the second season of House of the Dragon, the 2018 film Shoplifters, Shoplifters 2018 is a Japanese drama film directed by Hirokazu Koreeda, portraying a family that relies on shoplifting to cope with poverty and Benedetta, a controversial psychological drama directed by Paul Verhoeven, starring Virginie Efra as Benedetta Carlini, a 17th century nun who joins an Italian convent as a child and later has a lesbian love affair with another nun while experiencing religious visions. Saturday the 15th of June, 2024. Space Patrol 9.50 AM Talking Pictures Space Patrol is a British science fiction television series produced in 1962 and broadcast from April 1963. It features marionettes and follows the adventures of Captain Larry Dart and his crew in the year 2100. They're part of the United Galactic Organization, UGO, an interplanetary force formed by Earth, Mars, and Venus. Interestingly, the marionettes in Space Patrol incorporated some elements of Jerry Anderson's supermarionation technique, including synchronized mouth movements during dialogue. However, Anderson's full supermarionation style developed after his collaboration with Space Patrol creator Roberta Lee. The series has been unseen on British TV screens for over 50 years. The first episode, titled The Swamps of Jupiter, will air at 9.50 and 1. The show follows Captain Dart and his crew as they investigate the loss of contact with a scientific base on Jupiter. The Titfield Thunderbolt, 1953, 12.30pm BBC2 The Titfield Thunderbolt, a charming British comedy from 1953, directed by Charles Crichton, offers more than just a light-hearted tale of a quaint village's effort to save its railway line. Beneath its humorous exterior lies a rich tapestry of social and economic themes that resonate deeply, making it a film that both entertains and enlightens. The plot follows the residents of the fictional village of Titfield as they rally to save their local railway line from closure. When the government decides to shut down the line due to unprofitability, the villagers, led by the resourceful vicar Sam Weech, George Relf, and the wealthy Walter Valentine, Stanley Holloway, take matters into their own hands. They acquire an old steam engine, the Titfield Thunderbolt, and attempt to run the line themselves, facing numerous challenges along the way. One of the most prominent social themes in the Titfield Thunderbolt is the power of community. The film celebrates the unity and determination of the villagers as they come together to fight for a common cause. This theme highlights the importance of local initiatives and the strength found in collective action. The villagers' diverse backgrounds and skills are crucial to their success, emphasizing that community spirit can overcome significant obstacles. The film also portrays a nostalgic resistance to modernization and the encroaching industrialization that threatened many traditional ways of life in post-war Britain. The villagers' attachment to their railway line symbolizes a broader desire to preserve local customs and heritage in the face of rapid technological advancement and bureaucratic decisions made by distant authorities. This resistance reflects a yearning to maintain a sense of identity and continuity amidst change. Furthermore, the struggle between the villagers and the government bureaucracy reflects a classic David vs. Goliath scenario. The villagers' success in running the railway line stands as a critique of the impersonal and often inefficient nature of large institutions. It underscores the idea that individuals and small communities can sometimes manage resources better than large, centralized bodies. This theme is a testament to the resilience and ingenuity that can flourish when people are motivated by personal investment and communal ties. At its core, the Titfield Thunderbolt is a story about economic survival. The railway line is vital to the village's economy and its closure threatens the livelihoods of the residents. By taking over the railway, the villagers embody the spirit of local entrepreneurship and self-sufficiency. This theme resonates with contemporary discussions about the importance of supporting local businesses and economies, underscoring the necessity of grassroots efforts in sustaining local economic health. The film also questions the notion that the value of a service should be measured solely by its profitability. The railway line, though not financially profitable, is invaluable to the social and economic fabric of Titfield. This theme challenges the capitalist emphasis on profit maximization, suggesting that some services should be preserved for their intrinsic community value rather than their economic returns. 
It invites viewers to consider the broader implications of valuing public goods and services beyond mere financial metrics. Despite their initial resistance to change, the villagers demonstrate remarkable innovation and adaptability in their efforts to keep the railway running. They improvise, learn new skills, and find creative solutions to the challenges they face. This adaptability is a crucial economic theme, highlighting the importance of innovation in ensuring the survival and prosperity of small communities in changing times. It illustrates how necessity can drive resourcefulness and foster a spirit of innovation. The Titfield Thunderbolt is a delightful film that offers much more than mere entertainment. Its exploration of social and economic themes makes it a thought-provoking piece that remains relevant today. Through its depiction of community spirit, resistance to modernization, and the struggle for economic survival, the film presents a timeless message about the power of local initiative and the value of preserving community heritage. In doing so, it not only provides laughs but also invites reflection on the enduring challenges faced by small communities in an ever-evolving world. Dead Man's Shoes, 2004, 10.50 p.m. Film 4 Dead Man's Shoes, directed by Shane Meadows and released in 2004, is a gripping psychological thriller that delves deep into the themes of revenge, guilt, and redemption. The film stands out for its raw emotional intensity and its unflinching portrayal of human frailty and the darker aspects of the human psyche. Through compelling performances and a stark, atmospheric setting, Dead Man's Shoes leaves a lasting impact on its audience, making it a standout entry in British cinema. The story follows Richard, Paddy Considine, a soldier who returns to his rural hometown in the Midlands of England. He comes back with a singular purpose, to avenge the torment and death of his mentally disabled brother, Anthony, Toby Cabell. Richard's quest for vengeance is methodical and relentless, targeting the gang of small-time drug dealers responsible for Anthony's suffering. As Richard exacts his revenge, the film unravels the complex emotions and moral ambiguities that drive his actions. Paddy Considine's performance as Richard is nothing short of extraordinary. He brings a palpable intensity and vulnerability to the character, making Richard both terrifying and sympathetic. Considine's portrayal captures the internal conflict between Richard's grief-stricken humanity and his cold-blooded quest for vengeance. Toby Cabell, in his breakout role as Anthony, delivers a heartbreaking performance that adds a poignant layer to the narrative. Cabell's portrayal of Anthony is both tender and haunting, providing the emotional core of the film. Dead Man Shoes excels in its use of atmosphere and setting to enhance the story's tension. The bleak, desolate landscapes of the Midlands serve as a fitting backdrop for the film's dark themes. Meadows' direction, coupled with Danny Cohen's stark cinematography, creates a sense of foreboding and unease that permeates the film. The rural setting, with its run-down buildings and empty fields, mirrors the desolation and decay in the lives of the characters. The film's narrative structure is also noteworthy. Flashbacks to Anthony's abuse are interwoven with the present-day scenes of Richard's revenge, gradually revealing the full extent of the gang's cruelty and Richard's trauma. This non-linear storytelling adds depth to the characters and builds a sense of dread as the audience anticipates the inevitable confrontations. At its heart, Dead Man's Shoes is a meditation on the corrosive nature of vengeance and the possibility of redemption. Richard's journey is driven by his need to right the wrongs done to his brother, but his actions raise questions about the moral cost of revenge. The film does not shy away from showing the brutal consequences of Richard's actions, portraying violence in a raw and unglamorous manner. This stark portrayal forces the audience to confront the cyclical nature of violence and the toll it takes on both the perpetrator and the victim. The film's haunting score, composed by Clayhill and featuring songs by various artists, further enhances the emotional impact of the story. The music underscores the film's melancholic tone and adds to the sense of tragedy that runs throughout the narrative. Dead Man's Shoes is a powerful and unsettling film that explores the depths of human emotion and the moral complexities of revenge. Shane Meadows' direction, combined with standout performances from Paddy Considine and Toby Cabell, creates a compelling and thought-provoking experience. The film's atmospheric setting, non-linear narrative, and haunting score all contribute to its lasting impact. Dead Man's Shoes is not just a story of vengeance, but a poignant examination of grief, guilt, and the search for redemption. It is a film that lingers in the mind long after the credits roll, a testament to its emotional and cinematic potency.
Sunday, the 16th of June, 2024. The Fault in Our Stars, 2014, 9 p.m. BBC 3. The Fault in Our Stars, directed by Josh Boone and released in 2014, is a poignant adaptation of John Green's best-selling novel of the same name. The film captures the essence of teenage love and the profound struggles of living with a terminal illness. With its heartfelt performances, sensitive direction, and thoughtful screenplay, The Fault in Our Stars offers a moving experience that resonates with audiences of all ages. The story centers on Hazel Grace Lancaster, Shailene Woodley, a 16-year-old girl living with thyroid cancer that has spread to her lungs, requiring her to use an oxygen tank. At a cancer support group, Hazel meets Augustus Waters, Ansel Elgort, a charming and witty 17-year-old who is in remission from osteosarcoma. Their connection is immediate, and they embark on a journey of love and self-discovery that takes them from Indianapolis to Amsterdam in search of the reclusive author Peter Van Houten, Willem Dafoe. Shailene Woodley delivers an extraordinary performance as Hazel, portraying her with a blend of vulnerability, intelligence, and resilience. Woodley's nuanced acting brings depth to Hazel's character, capturing her fears, hopes, and the complex emotions she experiences as she navigates her illness and burgeoning relationship with Augustus. Ansel Elgort is equally compelling as Augustus, infusing the character with charisma and a zest for life that balances Hazel's more sombre outlook. Together, their chemistry is palpable, making their love story both believable and deeply affecting. The supporting cast also adds significant value to the film. Laura Dern, as Hazel's supportive and loving mother, provides warmth and compassion, highlighting the strain and unconditional love inherent in parenting a child with a terminal illness. Sam Trammell, as Hazel's father, and Nat Wolf, as Augustus's best friend Isaac, offer strong performances that further enrich the narrative. Josh Boone's direction is sensitive and respectful, avoiding excessive melodrama and instead focusing on the genuine emotional experiences of the characters. The film's pacing allows the relationship between Hazel and Augustus to develop naturally, giving the audience time to connect with their journey. Boone's careful handling of the subject matter ensures that the film remains grounded and sincere, even when dealing with heavy themes such as death and suffering. The screenplay, written by Scott Neustadter and Michael H. Weber, stays true to the spirit of John Green's novel, preserving its wit, humor, and emotional depth. The dialogue is sharp and often poignant, capturing the unique voices of the characters while addressing profound philosophical questions about life, love, and mortality. The film's ability to balance humor and heartbreak is one of its greatest strengths, providing moments of levity amidst the heavier emotional beats. Visually, The Fault in Our Stars is beautifully crafted. Ben Richardson's cinematography captures the serene beauty of everyday moments, contrasting the ordinary settings with the extraordinary experiences of the characters. The scenes set in Amsterdam are particularly striking, with the city's picturesque canals and historic architecture serving as a backdrop for some of the film's most memorable and emotional moments. The soundtrack, featuring songs by artists such as Ed Sheeran, Birdie, and Leaky Lee, complements the film's tone and enhances its emotional impact. The music underscores key scenes, adding an additional layer of resonance to the story's most touching and pivotal moments. The Fault in Our Stars is a heartfelt and beautifully crafted film that offers a tender exploration of love and mortality. Its success lies in its authentic portrayal of complex emotions and its ability to find beauty and hope in the face of tragedy. Shailene Woodley and Ansel Elgort's captivating performances, combined with sensitive direction and a thoughtful screenplay, make this film a memorable and moving experience. The Fault in Our Stars is not just a love story, but a profound meditation on the fragility of life and the enduring power of human connection. Paris, Texas, 1984, 1255 AM Film 4. Paris, Texas, directed by Vim Wendius and released in 1984, is a masterpiece of cinema that delves deep into themes of loss, identity, and redemption. The film, which won the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival, is a poignant exploration of broken relationships and the quest for reconciliation, told through a visually stunning and emotionally resonant narrative. The story begins with Travis Henderson, Harry Dean Stanton, a silent and amnesiac drifter, who is found wandering the Texas desert after being missing for four years. His brother, Walt, Dean Stockwell, retrieves him and brings him back to Los Angeles, 
where Travis slowly starts to reconnect with his past, including his young son, Hunter, Hunter Carson. Together, Travis and Hunter embark on a journey to find Hunter's mother, Jane, Nastasia Kinski, leading to a deeply moving and cathartic conclusion. Harry Dean Stanton's performance as Travis is nothing short of extraordinary. His portrayal of a man broken by past traumas is both subtle and powerful, capturing the character's inner turmoil and gradual awakening. Stanton's expressive face and minimalist acting style convey a profound sense of loss and longing, making Travis one of the most memorable characters in cinema. Nastasja Kinski's performance as Jane is equally compelling, bringing a sense of vulnerability and strength to the role that complements Stanton's performance perfectly. The film's visual style, crafted by cinematographer Robbie Muller, is one of its most distinctive features. The expansive landscapes of the American Southwest are captured in breathtaking detail, highlighting the isolation and desolation that mirror Travis's internal state. The use of color and light throughout the film enhances the emotional tone of each scene, creating a visual poetry that is both haunting and beautiful. Vim Wendia's direction is masterful, allowing the story to unfold at a deliberate and contemplative pace. The film's structure, with its long takes and unhurried editing, gives the audience time to absorb the character's emotions and the stark beauty of the landscapes. Wendia's focus on visual storytelling, combined with the sparse and evocative dialogue written by Sam Shepard, creates a deeply immersive and meditative experience. The film's soundtrack, composed by Rai Kuda, is another standout element. The haunting slide guitar score perfectly complements the film's mood, adding an additional layer of melancholy and introspection. The music underscores the emotional journey of the characters, enhancing the sense of longing and nostalgia that permeates the film. Paris, Texas is a film that explores complex themes with a remarkable sense of empathy and humanity. At its core, it is a story about the search for connection and the possibility of redemption. Travis's journey is one of self-discovery and reconciliation, both with his past and with his family. The film's exploration of broken relationships and the possibility of healing is both heart-wrenching and hopeful, leaving a lasting impact on the viewer. The film also delves into the theme of identity, particularly the struggle to reconcile one's past with the present. Travis's amnesia and subsequent rediscovery of his identity serve as a powerful metaphor for the human condition, highlighting the ways in which people must come to terms with their past in order to move forward. The titular Paris, Texas, a small and seemingly insignificant town, symbolizes the elusive nature of the American dream and the search for meaning in a vast and indifferent landscape. Paris, Texas is a haunting and beautifully crafted film that stands as a testament to the power of cinema to explore the depths of human emotion. With its exceptional performances, stunning visuals, and evocative soundtrack, the film offers a profound and meditative experience that lingers long after the credits roll. Vim Wendia's direction and Harry Dean Stanton's unforgettable performance make Paris, Texas a timeless classic, a film that speaks to the universal themes of loss, redemption, and the enduring quest for connection. Monday the 17th of June, 2024. House of the Dragon 9 p.m. Sky Atlantic. House of the Dragon is an American fantasy drama television series created by George R. R. Martin and Ryan Condell for HBO. It serves as a prequel to Game of Thrones and is based on Martin's book Fire and Blood. The show delves into the internal succession war within House Targaryen, set 172 years before the birth of Daenerys Targaryen. The series explores the Targaryen dynasty's power struggles, dragon control, and the events leading up to a gruesome civil war. The second season of House of the Dragon has received positive reviews ahead of its premiere. Critics praise its compelling storytelling, character development, and epic dragon fights. Expect intense drama, shocking deaths, and a deeper exploration of Targaryen intrigue. Sharplifters, 2018, 110 AM Film 4. Sharplifters, 2018, directed by Hirokozu Koreeda, is a multi layered exploration of poverty, survival, and the human condition. Set in Japan, the film introduces a family of lovable criminals living on the edges of society. Money is scarce, and they resort to shoplifting for survival. When they take in a little girl subjected to abuse, they view themselves as saviors. The film delves into classism, capitalism, and the disappearance of the middle class. 
Koeida's storytelling brings forth a visual representation of growing economic inequality, asking what people choose to sacrifice when faced with adversity. Tuesday, the 18th of May, 2024. AI Revolution, 7.25 p.m. PBS America. AI Revolution is a Nova documentary that explores the promise and perils of new artificial intelligence, AI, technologies. Premiering on March 27, 2024, it delves into how researchers are using AI to tackle significant challenges in fields like medicine and climate change. The show raises questions about whether we can harness AI's power without creating an uncontrollable force that could ultimately harm us. Only You, 2018, 11.05 p.m. BBC2. Only You, directed by Harry Woodliffe and released in 2018, is a deeply affecting romantic drama that explores the complexities of love, age differences, and the longing for a family. The film stands out for its honest portrayal of a relationship tested by time and circumstances, offering a refreshingly raw and nuanced depiction of contemporary romance. The story centers on Elena, Lia Costa, and Jake, Josh O'Connor, who meet by chance on New Year's Eve in Glasgow. Despite a significant age difference, Elena is 35 and Jake is 26, they quickly fall in love and move in together. As their relationship deepens, they begin to confront the pressures and challenges of trying to start a family, a journey that tests their bond in profound ways. Lia Costa's performance as Elena is mesmerizing. She brings a captivating blend of strength, vulnerability, and authenticity to the role, making Elena's emotional struggles deeply relatable. Costa captures the nuances of a woman grappling with her desires and insecurities, especially regarding the pressure to conceive. Her chemistry with Josh O'Connor is palpable, adding a layer of believability to their on-screen relationship. Josh O'Connor, as Jake, delivers an equally compelling performance. His portrayal of a younger man deeply in love but also facing the realities of a serious relationship is both heartfelt and genuine. O'Connor brings warmth, sensitivity, and an endearing awkwardness to Jake, making his character's journey and growth throughout the film engaging and authentic. Woodliffe's direction is sensitive and intimate, allowing the story to unfold naturally without resorting to melodrama. The film's pacing is deliberate, giving the audience time to fully engage with the characters and their evolving relationship. The use of close-up shots and handheld camera work creates a sense of immediacy and intimacy, drawing viewers into the personal space of Elena and Jake. The screenplay, co-written by Woodliffe and Matt Greenhalge, is both sharp and tender, capturing the realistic dialogue and emotional depth of the characters. The script does an excellent job of addressing the complexities of age differences, fertility issues, and the societal expectations placed on relationships and parenthood. The conversations between Elena and Jake feel genuine and unforced, reflecting the natural ebb and flow of a real-life relationship. Visually, Only You is beautifully shot, with the city of Glasgow providing a vibrant and authentic backdrop to the story. Cinematographer Shabir Kirchner uses natural light and muted color palettes to enhance the film's realistic tone. The cinematography, combined with a thoughtfully composed soundtrack, complements the emotional landscape of the characters, adding to the film's immersive quality. The film's exploration of the pressures and struggles surrounding fertility is particularly poignant. It handles the topic with sensitivity and honesty, depicting the emotional toll it takes on both partners. This aspect of the story is not often portrayed with such depth in romantic dramas, making Only You a significant and refreshing entry in the genre. Only You is a film that doesn't shy away from the messiness and imperfections of real love. It delves into the fears, hopes, and disappointments that come with a serious relationship, especially one complicated by societal expectations and personal insecurities. The film's strength lies in its ability to portray these experiences with empathy and authenticity, making the audience deeply invested in Elena and Jake's journey. Only You is a poignant and beautifully crafted film that offers a realistic portrayal of modern love. Lia Costa and Josh O'Connor's outstanding performances, combined with Harry Woodliffe's sensitive direction and a compelling screenplay, make this film a touching exploration of romance, identity, and the longing for a family. It is a story that resonates with the complexities of real-life relationships, offering a heartfelt and genuine depiction of love's challenges and triumphs. Wednesday the 19th of June, 2024. Benedetta, 
2021, 1.55 a.m. 4. Benedetta, directed by Paul Verhoeven and released in 2021, is a daring and provocative historical drama that delves into the complexities of faith, power, and sexuality. Based on the book Immodest Acts, The Life of a Lesbian Nun in Renaissance Italy by Judith C. L. Brown, the film tells the controversial story of Benedetta Cullini, a 17th-century nun who claimed to have visions and engaged in a forbidden love affair. With its fearless exploration of taboo subjects and its striking visual style, Benedetta is a thought-provoking and visually arresting cinematic experience. The story centers on Benedetta Carlini, Virginie E. Fira, who joins a convent in Pesha, Tuscany, as a young girl. As she grows older, Benedetta experiences intense religious visions and miracles, which bring her both reverence and scrutiny from the church. Her life takes a dramatic turn when she meets and falls in love with Bartolomea, Daphne Patekia, a young novice who has fled an abusive home. Their passionate and illicit relationship unfolds against the backdrop of religious fervor and institutional power struggles. Virginie E. Fira delivers a captivating performance as Benedetta, embodying the character's complexity with a blend of fervor, vulnerability, and determination. E. Fira's portrayal is multifaceted, capturing Benedetta's genuine spiritual experiences and her carnal desires with equal intensity. Her chemistry with Daphne Patekia, who plays Bartolo Mayer, is palpable and charged with emotion, adding depth to their forbidden romance. Patekia's performance as Bartolo Mayer is equally compelling. She brings a raw and earthy quality to the role, portraying Bartolomea's journey from fear and desperation to love and defiance with authenticity and passion. The relationship between Benedetta and Bartolo Mayer is the emotional core of the film, and both actresses navigate its complexities with nuance and sensitivity. Paul Verhoeven's direction is bold and unapologetic, tackling the film's provocative themes head-on. Known for his ability to blend eroticism with social commentary, Verhoeven uses his trademark style to challenge the audience's perceptions of piety, power, and desire. The film's tone shifts seamlessly between moments of intense drama, dark humor, and eroticism, creating a dynamic and engaging narrative. Benedetta is visually stunning, with meticulous attention to period detail and a rich, atmospheric aesthetic. Cinematographer Jean Lapoirie captures the beauty and austerity of the convent setting, using light and shadow to enhance the film's dramatic tension. The production design and costumes are equally impressive, immersing the audience in the world of 17th-century Italy. The film's screenplay, co-written by Verhoeven and David Burke, is intelligent and layered, exploring the intersections of religion, sexuality, and power with nuance and insight. The dialogue is sharp and thought-provoking, often revealing the characters' inner conflicts and the broader societal tensions at play. The script does not shy away from controversial subject matter, instead using it to provoke critical reflection on the nature of faith and authority. Benedetta also features a powerful score by and Dudley, which underscores the film's emotional and thematic depth. The music enhances the film's atmosphere, adding an additional layer of intensity to the narrative. One of the film's strengths is its ability to provoke and challenge. Benedetta is not content with simply telling a historical story, it engages with contemporary issues of gender, sexuality, and institutional power, making it a resonant and timely piece of cinema. Verhoeven's fearless approach ensures that the film remains thought-provoking and relevant, prompting viewers to question their own beliefs and assumptions. Benedetta is a provocative and visually stunning film that offers a bold exploration of faith, desire, and power. Virginie E. Fira and Daphne Patekia deliver outstanding performances, bringing depth and authenticity to their complex characters. Paul Verhoeven's direction, combined with a compelling screenplay and striking cinematography, makes Benedetta a memorable and thought-provoking cinematic experience. It is a film that challenges, provokes, and ultimately resonates, offering a fearless and multifaceted portrayal of a controversial historical figure. Thursday, the 20th of June, 2024. The Stormtrooper Scandal 9pm BBC2. This excellent documentary tells the story of London art curator Ben Moore and his Art Wars NFT project, which involved the sale of over 1,100 Stormtrooper helmets as NFTs. However, investors were unaware that the sale was built on empty promises. The show sheds light on the intersection of art, technology, and financial deception. The Movement and the Madman 10.50pm PBS America 
This explores two anti-war protests in the fall of 1969, which were the largest the country had ever seen. These protests pressured President Nixon to cancel his madman plans for a massive escalation of the U.S. war in Vietnam, including a threat to use nuclear weapons. Through remarkable archival footage and first-hand accounts from movement leaders, the film reveals how disparate groups mobilized coast-to-coast -to, -coast to create these massive protests that changed history. Friday the 21st of June, 2024 Dispatches, Rubbish Tip Britain 8pm, C4 Rubbish Tip Britain, Dispatches is a documentary that delves into the lucrative world of waste crime. It exposes how banned waste has been dumped for years in a major landfill site, seemingly unnoticed by the authorities, while posing a risk to human health. Studio 54, 9pm BBC 4 Studio 54 is a documentary that delves into the fascinating history of one of the world's most iconic nightclubs. Ian Schrager, one of the two people behind the infamous Studio 54, narrates the in-depth story of how this legendary nightclub was created. The documentary provides insights into the glamour, excess, and cultural impact of Studio 54 during its heyday. If you're interested, you can also watch it on BBC iPlayer. And finally streaming. Black Barbie is available on Netflix from Wednesday, 20th of June, 2024. Black Barbie, a new Netflix documentary set to premiere on June 19, 2024, dives into the history and cultural significance of the first Black Barbie doll, introduced in 1980. Produced by Shondaland and directed by Ligeria Davis, the documentary celebrates the pivotal role three black women at Mattel played in bringing this iconic doll to life. The film traces the journey of Beulah Mae Mitchell, Kitty Black Perkins, and Stacey McBride Irby, who championed the creation of a Barbie doll that reflected their own images and experiences. By exploring their stories, Black Barbie highlights the importance of representation in children's toys and how these dolls have influenced identity and imagination for generations of black girls. Black Barbie not only chronicles the creation of the doll but also delves into the broader impact of black dolls on civil rights and black entrepreneurship. It juxtaposes the legacy of these trailblazing women at Mattel with the stories of contemporary black women honored with their own Barbie dolls, providing a rich narrative on the evolution of the Barbie brand and its cultural ramifications. The documentary, enhanced by interviews and archival footage, underscores the significance of diverse representation in media and toys. It also features reflections from celebrities and fans, celebrating over 70 years of black culture and its intersection with the world of Barbie dolls. On ITVX, Before We Was We, Madness by Madness. All three episodes available from Thursday, the 20th of June, 2024. This provides an in-depth look at the legendary British ska band Madness. Adapted from the band's biography of the same name, this series chronicles their rise from the streets of Camden Town to the heights of fame in the music world. Directed by Ben Timlett and Bill Jones, the series presents a vivid portrayal of the band's early days, capturing the essence of 1970s and 1980s London. Through original footage and interviews with band members like Suggs, Mike Barson, and Lee Thompson, the documentary offers personal anecdotes and reflections on their journey. These narratives are set against the backdrop of significant cultural and political changes in post-war Britain, highlighting how these influences shaped the band's music and identity. The series is divided into three episodes, Oh What Fun We Had, They Called It Madness, and One Step Beyond. Each episode delves into different aspects of the band's history, from their formation and early struggles to their breakthrough and enduring legacy. The documentary doesn't just focus on their successes but also explores the challenges they faced, providing a comprehensive view of their path to becoming icons in the music industry. Before We Was We, Madness by Madness is not just a celebration of the band's music but also a poignant look at their impact on British culture. It is a must-watch for fans of Madness and those interested in the cultural history of the UK.